I am an admissions counselor with the University of Rochester. Um, I am joined today by some colleagues from the Hagem School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. They're going to take you through a presentation on the overall scope of our engineering departments here at the University of Rochester, um, and they'll also have some time for Q&A as well. Um, by this point, most of us are all pretty familiar with how uh, the functions of Zoom webinar work, but just in case you are not, um, you have access to a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Um, that is where you'll be able to ask any and all questions that you have. Um, there is no such thing as a, like a bad timed question um, because we have plenty of individuals here that are, are uh, ready to answer them. So even if one of our panelists today are, are talking about something and you have a question about something completely different, type that in the Q&A because someone here will be able to answer that right then and there. Um, so you don't forget it or worry about having to ask it later or anything like that. Um, ultimately, what we want is for you to come away from this session with all of your questions answered or uh, the knowledge of where to find an answer as you, you go off. Um, so welcome to this session. Um, congratulations on being admitted students uh, to the University of Rochester. Uh, and we hope that we're able to answer all of your questions this morning. With that being said, I will pass it over to my colleague, Nick, who will get us started. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nick Valentino. I'm an assistant director in the Hagem School of Engineering and Applied Sciences Dean's Office. Um, it's pronounced Hagem. That's uh, often a, a misconception. Ed Hagem is a man. He's alive and well and just uh, published his memoir. So uh, like I said, you, we might have the opportunity to meet Ed uh, during your time here if you choose to come to Rochester. Um, I've been at the UR for almost 15 years. Uh, and if you can't tell by the, how I say the word accent, I am a native Rochesterian. Um, please bear with me. I'm a little under the weather, and this is my first time doing this presentation, so I will do the best that I can. Uh, the good news is that I am not alone. Um, I just want to have the opportunity to, for the other staff in the HM Deeds office, introduce themselves. I'm going to start with Dean Alvin Lamibau. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Alvin Lamibau, um, and I uh, work with all these fine folks in the Deeds office. Hi, my name is Kelly Johnson. I'm another um, assistant director of the HM School undergrad programs here. And I am Hannah Goldstein, and I'm an academic advisor in the Hagem School. All right, so I'm just going to share my presentation. Can you guys see that okay? All right, so the purpose of this presentation is to give a very high-level in, uh, intro into types of things we can talk about. Uh, the presentation is designed for people who have no background on engineering or Rochester. We want to remind you that we will be recording the presentation. Um, to post on our website for those unable to attend or for you to revisit. Uh, in addition, we'll be monitoring the Q&A box. If you have any questions, please feel free to, to post those to the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, if you'd like to ask a question, please submit it through the Q&A function um, and the panelists will answer as many as, as time allows. I'll also take a few breaks during this to see if there's any questions that we wanna bring uh, to so that everybody can hear. Um, if you're ever in trouble viewing the webinar, you can call in and listen uh, using the phone number that was included in your confirmation email. So first, we'd like to acknowledge with respect the Seneca Nation, known as the Great Hill People, the keepers of the Western Door of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. Uh, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank the original caretakers on whose ancestral lands the University of Rochester currently resides in Rochester, New York. All right, so we've had introductions. Uh, the presentation I have is about UR from the engineering and applied sciences perspective. Uh, so the way that I will talk about academic student services and co-curricular opportunities will have an engineering and applied sciences bent. That being said, we know that for many of you, this is your first introduction to UR, so we'll be happy to answer questions more generally about the university. Um, also, all the uh, photos that we take, and we're also pre-COVID, um, so you will see a lot of maskless people. We look forward to taking more pictures uh, in the future of our new labs and facilities. So I wanna start with what is engineering because many students do not have access uh, to engineering in high school. And I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. Using a very basic definition from the National Academy of Engineering, engineering is the creation of technical sol solutions in the interest of humanity and society. So this definition has three components. The first is creation, um, which really tells us that engineering is about making, uh, inventing and problem solving. The second is technical solutions, which is to distinguish engineering outputs from that of art, journalism, et cetera, which is also creation. And finally, there is the interest of humanity and society. Engineers do what we 
uh, do so that we can make the world a better place for others to live. Um, you could look and see the first bullet, the comparative with the natural sciences proceeds to describe and understand natural phenomena. So we do get a lot of students who are interested in both engineering and, 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 and uh, natural sciences. So we wanna try to clarify this so that when you start to look at your academic path, you could start thinking about how engineering could be a part of it. There's also a more elegant or rom a romantic definition, which we really like from the Japanese film director, anime Hayao Maizaki, Maizaki, which is engineers turn dreams into reality. So you might be wondering how this compares to the fields of biology as we discussed, they are natural sciences. And in general, these subjects are interested in describing and understanding the world around us. Engineers and computer scientists do not work alone. They work with others and teams. So some context about what makes an engineer or computer scientist, you must have good critical thinking skills, creativity, ideation, innovation, ethics, integrity, and leadership. Another way to consider what engineering is is through the kind of problems they seek to explore. And that is through the lens of the National Academy for Engineering Grand Challenges. So you, you'll get some of this through our uh, website and you also look at this in some of the things that we do. Uh, the Grand Challenges for Engineering were announced in 2008 as the biggest goals for improving life in 21st century. Since 2017, UR has been one of about 50 schools across the country partnering with, with the goal of graduating students ready to address some of the most complex interdisciplinary and interconnected problems that society faces. So there's a lot of them. I'm gonna give you a second to take a look at these. Um, they do fall under four themes, making our world more sustainable, healthy, secure, and joyful. We like showing the grand challenges because they're interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary problems which fall with a lot of pathways to start solving them. For example, the Perseverance rover on the bottom right uh, falls under the engineering, the tools uh, for scientific dis discovery in order to create the Perse Perseverance rover and get it to Mars, the project team needed mechanical systems, they needed electrical components and systems such as sensors to support all aspects of the mechanical systems, optical requirements, including camera and other lenses and computer scientists. So if you're unsure about your intended major, see if it lines up with which grand challenge interests you the most. If it is securing cyberspace and you are interested in electrical and computer engineering or computer science, you're probably on the right track. If it is securing cyberspace and your intended major is chemical engineering, well, it might be more, more worthwhile to uh, investigate this more. So now that we're talking about majors, perhaps the most direct way to study engineering and applied science is Rochester through a major. We offer 11 majors, all of which are represented with dedicated 2026 experience sessions. So if you're interested in learning more about the majors, we will have a link to the information sessions at the end of the presentation. We certainly don't limit studying engineering and applied sciences to just majors. In fact, many students who have been graduating with majors in arts and sciences learn engineering and applied sciences through a lot of stuff. I'll talk about this in the next slide. So to give you an example, some of the related majors in arts and sciences might be archeology, span technology, and historical structures, data science, digital media, media studies, brain and cognitive sciences, business with their in information systems track, math, music, physics, there's a lot. I want to talk about some non-degree options for you. So perhaps you have an interest in some of the areas, as I mentioned, either on the grand challenges slide or on our list of majors, but you have another competing interest and sure, you're, sure, you're not sure if you want to do a full major in engineering or computer science. At Rochester, we do offer a number of options to study engineering or computer sciences that don't lead to a degree. A minor is a set of pre-approved clusters in a field given usually five to eight courses. All of our academic departments offer at least one minor and it's fairly common for even students who have one major in, the engineer, in one of the engineering majors to find space in, for a minor in another discipline. Uh, because we think technical exposure and experience is important for all students in the past few years, we have come up with uh, interdisciplinary clusters that live in the Hagen School, but have components of the humanities or social sciences as well. For example, engineering and technology and antiquity is a popular cluster. Um, uh, is a popular cluster that we can that can have a study study abroad component. We've had a field school in Ghana over the past few years. Sorry. 
and that is the picture over to the right, uh, where students explore the engineering, historical, and cultural aspects of a dozen coastal forts in Ghana. Green energy management could be for the students who are interested in the intersection of business or marketing and sustainable energy. So again, the audience for these clusters are students who will have a major in the arts and sciences or so humanities or social sciences, but are looking for a structured introduction to one of these areas that are broadly within the field of engineering, optics, or computer science. And finally, if, even if you don't want a full major or a minor or a cluster, we do offer about 15 introductory courses in engineering, product design, fabrication, and computer science. And these courses are open to all undergraduate students enrolled at the University of Rochester and have no prerequisites. And they are a combination of full credit classes, which is four credit hours for us, as well as two credit courses. All right. If you're undecided, how do you plan your first year? Your academic advisor will help you balance foundational knowledge in exploratory courses. Most, most courses are common between majors, and at any point, you are free to change intended major. Some schools have restrictions, uh, restrictions on this. We do not. So if you take a look at the first common first year, you'll see the fall, the intro to uh, engineering courses. Um, students will take a math, uh, regardless of, of which engineering discipline they're in, a science course in a writing or elective. And in the spring, um, you'll see some similar, the idea is that some of the uh, majors will have a secondary course in the major and others will have a foundational course in science, natural science, math, um, or elective or writing. Um, everybody takes the writing course. Um, so you can, students either do it their first or second uh, semester. All right, so I do wanna highlight two of our curricular options to help you explore your interests or have you find better footing. Um, courses like this also help you understand your resources and options. If you need help, chances are we have an office already dedicated to what you need. Um, I wanted to pause right now and see if there are any questions that we wanted to highlight. Okay. And certainly exploration does not mean just mean in the classroom. Um, the major declaration takes place during sophomore year. So we rely on students to give their experience in these areas and areas don't really care what your major is in order to participate. So I wanna to talk to you about the Grand Challenges Program. I talked about the Grand Challenges Program early, earlier, but want to let you know that there is a scholars program attached to those challenges as well. So because we are a partner, partner in a network of schools, over the course of your four years at the University of Rochester, you can complete your degree. And then on top of that, become recognized by the college as a Grand Challenges Scholar by choosing one of the Grand Challenges, and then completing five different kinds of experiences around that challenge. So you might choose provide access to clean water or engineer be better medicines or make solar energy economical or restore and improve urban infrastructure. And then complete the five experiences around that challenge with research, inter interdisciplinary experience, and entrepreneurship and innovation, global dimension, service learning. You don't actually need to have a major in engineering or applied sciences to be a Grand Challenges Scholar. Uh, we have had students graduate from the program with degrees in business analytics, brain and cognitive sciences, political science, economics, and digital media studies. Other ways to explore are global experiences, which mean both traditional study abroad, as well as shorter experiences, which could include four to six week summer experiences, or even one to two weeks during winter break. There's also community engaged learning, which combines teaching, research, uh, and practice with one or more partner organizations in the Rochester area that provides students with meaningful opportunities connected uh, to connect their learning with civic identity. This allows you to learn more about the issues facing our communities locally, as well as regionally and nationally. So after doing some exploration, you may still be undecided on which engineering to take. So we, we have a, first, a few options for you. The first is engineering science. So if you wanna take engineering courses, but want more flexibility, or if you want the technical understanding and problem solving skills that the engineering coursework provides, but you realize you don't wanna be a day-to-day -day engineer, engineering science may provide this for you. While engineering science is a BA, almost all of your coursework will be in math, physics, natural science, and engineering. 
So it's, as you can see, it says provides a strong uh, background for careers in technical sales, entrepreneurship, public service, and uh, management. Uh, we've also had students interested in business, economics, and law, specifically patent law, who have pursued engineering science. So the curriculum. So students who start engineering science are encouraged to take the introductory engineering course in applied sciences, introductory engineering and applied sciences course that they're most interested in. So if you're having trouble decided, but you think you're most uh, interested in something like chemical engineering, you can start as an engineering science uh, pre-major, uh, intended major, and take the chemical engineering introductory course. Uh, this way you can get exposure to the engineering and decide where your academic path will take you. Uh, some students may determine that they want more freedom in their electives and they want to tailor their courses to a specific field or job, and engineering science gives you that flexibility. So we have created optional focus areas. These are guides and students are not required to have a concentration in engineering science, but we know that you have a lot of interest and engineering science could be a good way to pursue both engineering and non-engineering paths. So I wanna to talk to you about interdisciplinary engineering. Students interested in engineering may find that a typical engineering program may be too specific for their individual aspirations. The interdepartmental inter engineering major allows students to design an individualized course of study not available through an existing major or a combination of existing majors and or minors in the Hagen School. As we see in the grand challenges, the problems that engineers are trying to solve are often interdisciplinary. Interdepartmental inter students can devise an engineering and applied sciences major from two or more engineering departments. To be approved for IDE, a few a committee reviews your proposed program and may accept it, reject it, or require it to be modified. So essentially, you can combine different parts of Hagen majors to create an interdepartmental engineering major uh, in conjunction um, with three uh, the three sequences of technical courses from your own choosing and students must complete an independent study project that culminates in a written senior thesis or project. All right, I'd like to take another, well, actually I'll one more slide. So, um, mind talking about one of the questions really quick, Nick? Go ahead. Um, so one of the questions was, um, can an international student um, do an internship? Um, so do you want to answer it or do you want me to? Uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, so international students can definitely do internships and um, many, many international students do. Um, there are just some forms that you would need to fill out. And also it would depend on the time of year. Um, so over the summer, um, for example, there's something called a CPT form um, that you can fill out um, to, uh, work with the school as well as the career center um, to plan out your internship. <clears throat> and um, usually it just needs to be something that's related to your major um, for that. And it can actually be a, a paid internship. Um, you just have to follow certain procedures for it. Um, and our career center is an area that helps um, all students, but including international students, um, find things like internships um, over the summer or even things like lab jobs um, that are on campus during the academic year. Um, you can do that um, if they have funding for a lab position, either paid or um, for academic credit. Okay, thanks. Any other questions we wanna answer right now? There, there was a couple other questions just about switching majors. And I think you covered this, but many students do change their mind about majors either right before they come or after they come. One thing that we just um, advise a lot of students to do is if you're thinking about it, um, an uh, engineering major, say chemical engineering, but you're thinking maybe uh, brain and cognitive sciences as well, sometimes we advise to start with engineering because there might be more prerequisites that if you don't um, start taking them right from the start, it can make it a little bit tougher to catch back up. Um, but a major like brain and cognitive sciences, it might not have as many prerequisites that, that have to be taken in order. Um, so it might be easier to switch out versus switch in to, to the Hagen School. 
Yeah, one of the things that we want to highlight is that we do have a degree of flexibility with this because we know that students are not 100% sure or even 50% sure in some cases, uh, but it does become time to, to take coursework. Um, one of the things I want to show uh, is this, the sample uh, IDE programs. And this actually is pertinent because uh, students who do the interdepartmental engineering, it's less common because students find that existing major and minor combinations are enough to get them where they want to go. Um, so like robotics combines uh, electrical and computer engineering and it combines computer science, but students uh, find that they're more interested in software than hardware. So they choose to take maybe a, a computer science uh, major and then, elect, uh, and then take electrical and, and computer engineering courses. So um, while we do have some inter interdepartmental students, a lot of times the students find that our majors are sufficient in that way. Uh, so this is a lot. <laughs> how, how do you navigate this by yourself? Uh, are you prepared for this? These are all very natural uh, reactions to all of this, um, but you're not alone. Um, so we have no expectation or requirement that you have an engineering or applied sciences background when you come in from high school. Um, we want you to be able to feel like you're comfortable coming in, uh, that you have enough training to be here. Getting into the, to the college is, is enough for you to be able to take on an engineering coursework. Um, we care a lot about your success in the first year. We, we care about a lot of your success all four years, but the first year is special is pivotal because there is that transition to uh, taking college courses and uh, all the things that go into to trans transitioning to college. Um, we have a tiered advising model. So you'll have different advisors for different areas uh, to answer these questions for you. So we put a premium on, on your learning outside the classroom. So we have larger classes have tiered learning uh, through smaller workshops or recitations. Uh, we encourage students to join or, or create formal and informal study groups. And there's also checkup points uh, during the first year. Um, we'll if we have a pre-major, we have an interim grade system and a midterm warning set uh, can let you know if you're not doing uh, as well as you want to and that you're not on track. Um, our office takes pride in pre-professional societies, affinity organizations, and design groups to help you your, find your community and explore engineering outside the classroom. Like I said, we won't let you do this alone. So your fellow students will also be your advisors. We have peer advisors, we have peer career advisors, RAs, first year fellows, and peer health advocates. You're also going to get, if you decide to take an engineering and applied sciences major, you're going to get a college advisor, a departmental uh, faculty advisor, and an undergraduate coordinator. Um, you also have professional advisors across student services and student life. Um, you, there will be, you'll have, you'll, you'll definitely have enough advice and part of what the transition is, is understanding which advisor will be able to help you with what, and we will be able to help you with that. So this is a lot of information for now, but I just wanna let you know that help is available. If you wanna learn more about any of these services, I'll refer you to the 2026 experience where many of these uh, areas in office will have webinars. So we, we know that you are all aspiring engineers and we love to look at data. So I have some data uh, to take a look at. I'll leave this up for a minute, but a few numbers I wanna highlight is the involvement. 90% uh, of our students are involved in a student organization or varsity sport. We have over 250 at the University of Rochester. This can include one of the 250 plus performance groups, dance or cultural based music ensembles like acapella, cultural groups, fraternities and sororities, intramurals, competition groups like debate, community engagement, religious groups. There's a very high number compared to our peers. And it really shows that our students are self-driven and do time find, find time to balance it all. Uh, if you look at the academics, 25% uh, uh, first year students change their major. So if there is uncertainty, don't worry, you're not alone. 35% uh, of students graduate with an additional major or minor. Um, and after graduation. So one of the things we're frequently asked by parents as well as students is what happens after you graduate? So here's a snapshot from a career center survey that was distributed for the class of 2020. Uh, they began sur surveying right after around commencement and for the purposes of comparison to previous years, stopped six months after graduating. So you can see on the left-hand side of the slide that about 47% of the survey respondents reported finding employment. About 42% uh, go on for further education 
which can include a master's or doctoral degrees. And actually, uh, I don't have a breakdown here, but it includes students who go on to medical school, business school, law school, master's in public health. And these are all common outcomes for our students. And then finally, a small proportion of our alumni are either still looking or no longer looking. The last thing I, I wanted to um, do with this slide is to mention that after graduating, you are still part of the Rochester community. There are more than 100,000 living alumni, uh, 100,000 alumni living across the country and world. Uh, we have an incredibly robust alumni relations office and career center that you wanna stay in touch with after you graduate. One of the more recent initiatives is the Meliora Collective, which is an online platform open to alumni, students, and the University of Rochester community to foster career development and exploration at the professional level. So it's appropriate for any stage of folks' career. All right, so we want to bring you to questions. Uh, I wanted to, to you know, draw your attention that we have uh, social media on the top left. Um, there's also a link where you'll have more sessions and info, uh, which we will also communicate to you. On the right, we have, these are the email addresses for the undergraduate coordinators in each of the departments. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of them, um, so we'll be able to help. Um, I see we have a question pending. I wanted to open the floor up for other questions as people uh, are interested. Nick, the one question we have open is about overlap. So is it uh, possible or common for a student to complete a, a, a degree in an engineering field and then have a, a minor in another engineering field? Is that yeah, I mean, even credit is that possibility? Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely possible. A lot of it is centered around you know what type of coursework they're taking as their major and the, what flexibility that they have. Um, some of the, our our engineering majors are a little bit more structured, and you have to take courses to be able to take the next courses. There'll be prerequisites, um, and others give you a little bit more flexibility. So we, it's very common that we do have students do a minor and in some cases another major. Um, the first thing that we ask though is why. Uh, we wanna make sure that you're not just taking additional coursework because part of the real strength of the University of Rochester is a research one uh, college. So you have all this stuff going on uh, that might be a better answer than to take uh, additional coursework, though it is possible. So um, that's part of why we have such advising in the first year because we wanna make sure that, you, we know you wanna to get to everything, uh, but at the same time, we wanna make sure you have those foundational courses first so that you can start to branch out after that. Do you want to talk a little bit about the um, overload policy? Or I can do that, actually. Sure. So uh, <laughs> the, we really want to make sure that students, when they come to the university, that they are transitioning well, uh, both to uh, taking classes at the college level, as well as to you know really getting engaged in the community. Hopefully, one of the things that you can tell uh, throughout Nick's presentation is that uh, we really do consider student life you know, a, a really important part of a student's identity while they're at Rochester. So, so as, as a result of that, we do have a credit limit for the number of courses that a student can take in their first semester. So it's uh, traditionally 19 credits, uh, which uh, you know, the policy actually states that you can take no more than four full credit courses plus three credits on top of that. So, and that's really just to make sure that, again, that, that you are adjusting to the pace and um, the pace and the content in college courses. After that first semester, uh, you are able to overload, um, take additional courses be in excess of the 16 credit hours that is considered a full-time status. Um, and, that, and that's done based on your GPA. So if your GPA allows it, then you're able to uh, overload. But um, you know, in many cases, uh, most students uh, don't really need to do that in order to graduate on time. So part of the reason why we, we put the contact information up here is we really do want you to have these questions answered first. Um, the transparency is important, but also we want you to have that kind of access so that you can make this decision over time. Um, you may have had exposure to computer science uh, as a high school student, um, but want to know a little bit more what it's like here. And we might have the opportunity for you to talk to faculty, um, to talk to advisors, just to get a better sense of, is this thing that I think that I want to do the same in college? And that's why we have these things now so that you can ask these questions uh, before you make your decision ultimately to come here. Any 
any other questions? That so, we yeah, I was just going to answer a question about um, AP STEM credit from high school. Um, so the question was, are high school STEM AP credits counted at the University of Rochester? And the short answer to that is yes. Um, typically, uh, you know, if you're referring to like AP bio or physics or something of the like, those will count. Um, but usually you must have, I think, receive at least a four and or a five on the AP exam. And on our website, we have a list of the courses that they transfer over to. So usually it'll be like your introductory, you know, Calc course or physics or bio or something of the like. And so that's just something to keep mindful of. But make sure that if you do have AP courses, that you send, you know, the official transcript through the College Board to our registrar's office. I just um, attached a link um, that shows exactly what scores you would need for which courses. Um, and if you just search for it on our website, we also have one for IB credits and um, A-level credits are a little bit different, but <clears throat> we definitely um, do accept those as well if you took the higher level uh, exam. So one of the questions that was answered was, you know, can you switch if you're intended on taking arts and sciences, can you switch to, to uh, engineering? Um, you can, but also this also can happen in the second semester um, because we have such a standard template for those first semester courses, which you take the intro to Hagem course, you take a math, hopefully you take the writing um, or you take another science. If you want to change in that second semester, it's we have a lot of students that do this and don't have to take any additional semesters as a result. Um, so, like I said before, you're going to be making this decision up to the time when you decide to come here. And even if you get here partway through the first semester, you realize you, you belong somewhere else uh, within the, the Hayden School, we can help you to, to make that decision and determination without having to add additional semesters uh, to, your, to your undergraduate time. All right. Um, I will jump right in here and, and thank Nick and Alvin and Kelly and Hannah for their time. Um, we do have a, a little bit more time on the, the schedule. So if any questions do come in, we're happy to stick around for a couple more minutes. Um, but at the same time, uh, given the fact that the presentation is for you all, if, if you have your questions answered, uh, then kudos to our, our panelists for making sure that that uh, occurred. Um, I do wanna draw attention uh, as, as for admitted students, uh, we do have another admitted students day coming up uh, in just two more days this Saturday, April 9th. Um, so that's a great opportunity to get on campus, um, go around, uh, there's some mock lectures, there's an opportunity to meet with other students that have been admitted, stuff for your families, meeting with alumni, uh, and, and much, much more. So if you haven't had a chance to get on campus, it's a great opportunity to do so as, you're, as you continue to go through the process of picking your, uh, your future college. Um, with that being said as well, Nick mentioned that we have a... Um, class of 2026 website that you all received in your admissions letter and that uh, hosts all of our other virtual sessions. So if there's a specific engineering department that you're interested in, we do have some more of those over the next few weeks, um, as well as more general sessions on things like financial aid, residential life, uh, research at Rochester, various things like that. So check those out as you're making your decision as well. Um, the other thing I'll do real quick is just put my email address in the chat box. Um, as if you don't want to try and remember everyone's, you could always reach out to me as sort of a point person and I can put you in touch with any one of these uh, people that have been presenting to you as well as any of those undergraduate coordinators that Nick had mentioned earlier. And I think I just saw a question come in, Nick. I'm not sure if. Is, uh, would there be another admitted student day uh, later on after 4-9? We will not. We had one last Saturday, April 2nd, and then we have this one April, this coming Saturday, April 9th. Um, plenty of other opportunities to come visit campus, however, um, just not in the sort of formality of an admitted students day. Um, so you could always go on our website and sign up for a regular uh, trip to campus. Um, as we get into later April, we will be doing some Saturday morning information sessions and tours and things like that. Um, so there's still an opportunity to get a lot of those same experiences. Um, just not sort of under the formal title of an admitted student's day um, after this Saturday, April 9th. Um, but again, feel free to reach out to me if, you, if there's a different day that works better for you and your family to get to campus and we can make sure that we get you set up with as much uh, of those experiences as we can 
on any given day.